Well, my question has evolved a little because of the workshop is the place where everything evolves. And I want to talk today about a biz uh, me being in my business and business situations. And you said this in this workshop, so I wrote it down. And I, what I want to be able to do is dominate my own vibration when I am in business situations with others. Um, now, let's say this in another way. Sure. Do you accept that in your vortex is a vibration and that your inner being is at that frequency? Yes. So you want to allow that vibration to dominate your vibration. Yes. And when you do, then you have the power of influence, which then uplifts others around you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So whatever it takes to get out of the way of that vibration. Well, what would it take for me? Um, I find that when I'm in, like, say if I'm with my business partner, who's a person I love, I love being in business with them. He's very moody. And if he's in a bad mood and now, I wait a minute, the situation, you're just so. messing up your vibration. <laughs> okay. That observation does not serve you oh. truthful as it is accurate as it is. When you introduce that into your vibration, your vibration takes a dip. Mm. It just has to. Because you see that as a hindrance to you. So as you focus upon that hindrance, you activate it. Only, only after the fact. So what's my fourth thing? Only process? after the fact. So what you're saying is I'm an observer and I'm responding to what I'm observing. So here's the question. How can I put myself in a position where I'm less likely to observe that? Now think about it. So someone is moody and you rendezvous with their moodiness, doesn't that say something about where you must have been in order to rendezvous? Or do you think law of attraction made you the one exception in all of the universe? <laughs> He's moody, not. she's not. Let's bring them together. It never works that way. Right. It never works that way. Now there is something to be said about doing things out of obligation. In other words, sometimes you just march yourself right into a negative situation because you said you would go. You said you would go at a certain time to a certain place. So you're just going to show up there, yes. but you can always prepave. And as you said, your words were really good. I want to make sure that I'm in alignment with who I am, that I'm tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and that I'm reverberating the fullness of who I am before I go into any situation. And when that is your dominant intent, then you won't blunder into things that you are likely to observe that are likely to take you into a dip in your vibration. Well, what's the so, process? So it's, so it's what we were talking about, about creating in advance instead of waiting for it to happen, which is the falling out of the airplane at 50,000 feet. Don't worry. It'll be over soon. What you do is prepave in advance. So you prepave in advance by telling different stories about your partner, mm -hmm. stories about brilliance, stories about sensitivity, stories about really good ideas, stories about fun, stories about passion and eagerness, stories about insight stories about really good conceptual understanding stories about what a good partnering it has been you tell that story you leave the story out about the moodiness and after you leave that story out for a while it won't be active within you and if that person chooses to be moody that person will not rendezvous with moodiness when you are around awesome awesome so if i can't find the words what's another way for me to get there because I have I do that I know that process and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't like I can't find uh, speech but there can be something else one of maybe one of the other processes well the words don't really matter it's how you feel but sometimes in reaching for words for example let's take the word moody that's a really moody person she is always joyful yes. joy is always her mood now that's not what you meant when you said moody no by moody you usually mean negative, negative emotions mood. but yeah. it doesn't have to be that way so you could start expanding your meaning of the word moody by acknowledging that there are many moods in other words my partner is a very sensitive intuitive person utilizing guidance in a very strong way and when he focuses upon unwanted his mood reflects it and when he focuses upon wanted his mood reflects that and I am the same because when I focus upon his mood, which is negative, then my mood reflects the same. In other words, we are all moody, which is my new way of saying we are all sensitive to vibration. We are all sensitive to emotion. We are all using our guidance system in a better way. So let's take the word moody. So what do I mean by moody and how can I utilize it in a positive way? I mean, attentive. I mean, aware. I mean, sensitive. 
I mean conscious I mean aware of vibration I mean sensitive I mean guiding I mean deliberate I mean uh, effective so you take a word and then you just massage it into a vibration that works for you so when we talk about going general so Esther starts out every day she opens her notebook a great big page and she writes the word fun because she has decided to devote every day of her life to fun fun is what she is wanting so fun she writes fun 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 is a nice word and it means something specifically to Esther but then she wants to broaden that word fun I mean funny and I mean laughing and I mean good timing and I mean spontaneity and I mean whimsy and fanciful and good timing good timing is the best part of fun I mean attraction I mean sincere I mean loving fun and so she can get so much mileage out of one word just by reaching for other components of that word and you can feel they were in a really beautiful cabin on this ship and there was a beautiful buffet and when they turned the key in it Kate and Esther discovered it together there were glasses of all sizes for different drinks there were little cordial glasses they were beautiful Waterford crystal there were iced tea glasses there were brandy glasses there and Esther said "Ooh, let's have some fun so she took one of each of them and put it on the table and Kate poured a little bit of water in each one of them and then Esther took a knife that was there and ding 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 <laughs> And they discovered that by putting different amounts of water in different glasses that they could discover a sort of perfect pitch and they didn't have all of the notes on the musical scale but enough of them to make some pretty good sounding music and so it was Esther's turn and so she is dinging 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 and it was really beautiful ding 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 and then uh, <laughs> it was so obvious that that glass was out of alignment that Kate just burst out laughing it was the funniest thing so obvious that something is off yeah. and we want you to know that as you're reaching around for words you can feel which ones resonate which ones enhance which ones add to it and which ones are the sour note yeah. which ones are the off you see there's a tendency as you move around in your physical world to find the friend that every time you ding them you get back <laughs> and you want to blame them and we want you to know you invited them to your symphony okay and even though most of the notes are harmonious every note that comes to you you invited you see so just pour a little more water in them or something <laughs> and they'll usually tune right up well that's great I think I'll use Esther's process to start each of my business days <laughs> thank you very good